Hello, and welcome from BMAS STEM Academy. I am Dustin Schuyler, the head of school, and I'm here with Dave Ramsey, assistant head. Hi, Dave. Hi. And we are very pleased to have with us James Bassett, who is the design creator and co-founder of Astro Lighting. So hello, James. Hello. Hi, James. So Dave and I are going to ask you a series of questions about your life and about your company. Um, and we're going to have lots of different people watch this. We're recording it so we can show it to to students, current students, future students, and we just really appreciate, first of all, your time with us. So, so thank you in advance. No problem. Um, James, if you, if you could just tell us a little bit about your career journey um, and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, sure. Um, I think, um, obviously, I started, as you all are, doing my A-levels, and it was um, during the A-levels that design, uh, the design and the creative process sort of floated to the top of what I was interested in. Um, I was studying other subjects, but they started just to fall by the wayside. It was it, it became apparent that that was the thing that sort of uh, floated my boat or whatever the expression is. You know, it's um, it was the one thing I started to become passionate about uh, and excited by. So I ran with that. I then went on to do at, at the same time, I probably wasn't applying myself as much as I should have been, but uh, don't take any notice of that. Apply yourself properly. Um, um, I, I did a foundation course as well, so that that gave me a little bit more focus. I was I knew I wanted to do something in the design world, but wasn't quite sure what. And it was the it, that crystallised uh, the product design aspect of it. And um, once I'd sort of focused in on that, I went to uh, university to study product and furniture design at uh, um, Kingston University. It was a polytechnic back in the day, but uh, they've long gone. So, uh, um, and and it was there really that it, that it, it sort of took off. Um, also, there was a happy accident. And I think if there's one message, you know, you have to sort of ride your luck a bit. You know, you have to take, opp life presents opportunities, whether you're in education, in work or, or whatever it might be. And it's, half of it is luck. But the other half is uh, what you do with that luck. Uh, I was lucky enough to be selected for a student show. My my final project was 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 okay actually. It was probably the best project I'd done, fortunately. And I was selected to go into a student show in London. Um, and while I was exhibiting my work there, I designed a sofa, by the way. Um, while I was exhibiting there, um, someone from a lighting company came along and said. I really like the sofa. We should, you know, I think there's an idea there. We could manufacture it. It was a small lighting company. They used to dabble with various other things. Anyway, cut long story short, the sofa didn't go anywhere, but they offered me a job in the lighting company. So that's how I got into lighting. So it quite a, a you know, a, a fortunate series of events combined with a design education. So it was just having a little bit of luck at the end. Um, from that, uh, that was really in at the deep end, uh, working for a lighting company. Um, I moved on various different companies after that. And it was, I think, at my third job that I met uh, my co-founder, John Fear, and he was actually the chap who employed me. He um, interviewed me for a job at a company. We got on extremely well and um, we were working together for a couple of years and again through sort of a lucky uh, coincidence happened that the, the company that we were working for was was sort of not going very well it was failing we could see that so we uh we sort of jumped ship john suggested that we set up our own company and do our own thing which we decided to do and there were the two of us um that started astro lighting literally the just the two of us we were manufacturing in south wales and we had a little office based in the in the basement in the cellar of my house i converted the cellar into a little office just for the two of us there were no windows it was slightly damp um and uh, but we had a telephone line we had one computer and it got us going um and and, and from there we've, we've we've steadily grown we moved into our first premises in harlow um, we started in 1997 we moved into our first place in harlow uh, in 1998, so a year after we started, we had a little um, industrial unit in Harlow. Uh, we stayed in Harlow ever since and moved around. In fact, we've moved up and down this one road. This is our fourth uh, fourth uh, office that we're in. Um, we've now got about 8,000 square foot of warehouse here, plus office. 
Uh, interesting little fact I re realized the other day that our, our office space is twice as big as the total floor space of our first warehouse. So the warehouse was tiny. Uh, so we've got a bigger, we've got twice the size of office space here. So anyway, um, and that's where we are now. We're employing about 130, 135 people around the world. We've got uh, an office in the, in the States, got an office in Singapore, an office in China. And um, yeah, there's a few more people than just the two of us. So I hope that gives you an overview of what my career has been. No, oh, absolutely. Thank you. I, I love hearing these stories, and I think it's really uh, important for whoever's watching this and our students that are going to be watching it to hear, you know, the, the, the background of where you're in a basement, that damp basement, and you didn't yeah. start off in your large uh, warehouse, you know. No, it, no, no. You, you've, you've, got to, you, you, you've got to sort of um, just go with it. You know, you've just got to seize the moment and, and be adaptable, be flexible, work with what you've got, um, and just keep keep plowing on with what you want to do yeah excellent well thank you for sharing i really appreciate it um it was interesting what you were saying about about university i, I remember when um i ended up going uh, and, and trying to decide exactly which route i wanted to take i, I knew so sort of like yourself i wanted to go design engineering that kind of area mm -hmm. um but design is so broad, you know, the, the, the subject of design and when you start thinking the art end of it and the engineering end of it as well. Uh, what would you say um, w to, to a student who was interested in going into design and wasn't quite sure sort of where they should focus, w which degree path they might want to, to take? Um, I suppose a lot of that is, is personal choice. And it, it, again, it's sort of going back to the bit you enjoy. At Astro, we have uh, my, myself, uh, we have another sort of purely creative designer who are, who are tasked with uh, product generation. So in a way, we've got a we've got a product management team and a product strategy. So we know we need a product that does this. You know, there's a gap in the market. There's a demand from a customer for this. So they're, they're generating um, the, the brief, the demand. It's a set of words. Now, uh, myself and this other chap, Riley, are tasked with, OK, well, what does that set of words look like in three dimensions? How does it how does it become an astro product? How does that set of words come into a 3D form? We've also got a fantastic team of engineers who are from the more engineering side of design who um, take that form and then make it work. And they really enjoy that part of it. You know, it's, it's what it's what it, there's overlap for sure, but it's the, the bit that you know, the engineering -y side or the creative side, um, you know, sometimes the creative side is really very hard. You know, this, this afternoon, for example, we've just had an ideas meeting where every so often we get together and, uh, and put forward new ideas. Now, I'm tasked with presenting some products. Um, it's a blank sheet of paper. Now, a blank sheet of paper can be one of the most daunting things in the world. You know, what you know, there's a, there's demand from the marketing team saying we really need one of these. Our customers are demanding one of these, and uh, and go away and design it. And you think, well, how hard can it be? I can tell you, it's very hard indeed. You have got a blank sheet of paper. It's very daunting. Um, so once I've created it, you know, the, the, you've got this engineering team who will go off and you know bring that into the world. You know, and sometimes you know they also have the hard bit because it's very easy for me to do a little pencil sketch and it looks fantastic Whoa, wonderful brilliant it doesn't work and you can't fit the parts in it and uh, you you no such material exists to do that so there's there's a crossover between what it looks like and how you're going to make it and, and and i suppose the bit that excites you we've also i don't know whether you're sort of more engineering -y, but we've got a graphics team and we've got sort of a technical side as well so um i'm not sure how, how that relevant that is for you but um no, that's brilliant thank you yeah. Excellent. and uh, james it's quite inspiring listening to your, your life story and uh, running a successful company and again to our younger viewers watching this look I'm, I'm sure you've acquired a lot of skills over the time throughout your career can you talk about some of the skills that you would recommend that you think uh, our students uh, would need to acquire uh, to get to where you are and what you've learned over over time, the, the skills that stand out the most? Yeah, um, I think this is a question, it quite, it's, a, it's a great question and it's sort of um, more about life in general. Um, there's a there's a design and engineering aspect to it, but um, when my first job that I mentioned, this this uh, this guy who, who saw the sofa I designed and uh, said, you know, 
I, I started working with him and and when he said this to me it didn't really make sense but it makes sense very much now which is uh, design is about five percent of what you do the other 95 percent is managing it how do you get that design how do you interact with people how do you communicate well um, how do you get on with people how do you um, get your points across how do you get the work done how do you manage your time you know there's so many um, you know I mentioned sitting down with a pencil. Well, that he's absolutely right. That is a tiny percentage of what I do. It's being able to manage all those different aspects of a job, whether that's design, engineering, whatever it might be, you know, being a doctor, who knows? It's, it's, it's I suppose that's life in general. I think that's hugely important. I think it's being able to um, um, look after all the different aspects and, uh, you know, prioritizing what's important. Um, yeah, I'd say that's that's what I'd like to pass on. My little tip bit of information. Hope that helps. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so obviously, astro, brands in general and, and Astro Lighting as a brand, um, um, the students have this sort of really exciting opportunity to, to come up with some concept designs that 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 we could say could sort of you know fit in with the brand or take inspiration from it. Um, Thinking more about the, the project that our students are going to do, could you talk about what you think the key features are of Astro, the Astro Lighting brand? Yes, um, this is one of those elevator questions where you're in the elevator with someone, you've got 10 seconds or so, something to, before you get to the next floor when you've got to pitch what your company is all about. It's very hard to encapsulate, but I'll try anyway. Um, what what Astro, I think what Astro Lighting does, we design um, well-designed contemporary lighting for sort of high-end domestic and hospitality. I think what's important to us is we um, strive to get the little details right. At face value, our products are quite um, pared back, quite simple, but uh, a designer a lot more um, skilled than me, Achille Castiglione, I think back in the 1960s said that uh, simplicity is the most complicated thing in the world. And he's absolutely right. You know, how do you, you know, the simpler something is, the more correct the details have to be. So all the little details have to add up to be right. Um, I also think it's important to, um, and this is more so now than ever, there's a lot of white, I think of it as sort of design white noise. You know, there's so many people doing so many different things and it's all available all of the time. You can just go online and you could be swamped with hundreds of thousands, millions of different lights. You think all the ideas are done. So it's more important than, than ever for us to understand what it is we're about, to understand what's important to us. You know, what do one of the overriding um, design principles we follow, which sounds very simplistic, but is is true and has stood us in good stead, is um, would I buy one? Do I like it? You know, um, and, and it sounds simple, but it's true. If you just stick to your core principle of if, if I'm designing a product, don't forget to stop and ask myself, well, do you like it? Would you buy one? Would you have it in your house? You know, it's important and you have to have this consistency of thought and process and um, as I say, it's it's very easy to get distracted by all this white noise of design around you, uh, but just stick to what you know, what you believe in, and uh, and follow that path. And if, if we can expand upon that a little bit, how because you get lots of these different uh, designs and lots of different products that are that, that come to you, how how do you know when to take that to market? How what's the decision process? And think, okay, this is the the product I have, and now we want to take it to market. What what's that next step? Uh, kind of explaining what you just answered. I, I suppose, you know, this is another good question because it's like an artist, you know, when does he, when, when does an artist step away from the canvas and say, well, I'm not going to put a single mm. other dab of paint on that painting, it's finished. Um, and, and one could tinker for hours on, you know, just fettling little details here and there, but, um, it's hard to know. I think sometimes what we do is we push a design. So we we have a design and we think, well, that's great, but maybe that part there should be a little bit bigger. And what we'll do is we'll we'll make a sample, a model, 
uh, that's a little bit bigger and then bigger still, bigger still. And then, and then you think, oh, we've gone too far and you kind of come back. So you you push some of the design envelope a little bit and then you think, well, it's, that, that's that's gone too far. So we rein it back. So it's um, also we're quite um, we're quite a collaborative company. So I might be tasked with um, taking this set of words and creating a product from it or what that product would look like, how it how it inhabits the world as an astro product. Um, but we are collaborative, so we have a, you know, we have some very experienced people here. For example, my um, my business partner John Fear, and he, you know, he's got a really good eye. He kind of he, he kind of knows uh, whether something is commercial, as in, you know, that's that's a commercial product it will sell, or if it's if it's sort of misses the target. And you know, we've got other people in the company, so we have a we have a weekly meeting. The designs are presented. And we take opinion and and um, eventually we get to a point where we think, well, everything's the right size, the proportions are correct, the sizes are correct, we like the finishes, uh, it functions properly, you know, in amongst all of this it has to function because with lighting, it's a piece of furniture, it sits in a space, it is a 3D object, but it has to function as well. So you've got this great, um, uh, you know, coexistence of the only reason you're buying that product is it it emits light. It emits light. You're buying it to do a job, to, to to light up your space, but you want it to look great. So it's it's how you balance those two things. It has to function well, but be desirable. And uh, sometimes you get it right, bang on. You know, you you might you might do a sketch, which goes through to a product, and occasionally you think, well, I'm not going to change a single thing. It's right. Or you tweak it very slightly happens very rarely. Usually you're kind of in the right ballpark and then you 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 sort of fine tune it and you arrive at a place you think, yep, I wouldn't change a thing. And if you're in doubt, usually we don't have time to do this, but what you, if you had time, stick it away for a couple of months, uh, forget about it, go back to it. If you look at it again and think, I wouldn't change a thing, then it's probably right. Sure. Uh, and I also think that when I look back at products, there are certain products in our range that we probably designed 10, 15 years ago, I look at them and think there's not a single thing I would change about that. I mean, there's lots of products where I think, oh, I don't know why I did that. I would do something else, but, uh, you know, that's yeah. how we we arrive at where we do. And so it's going to be probably a really proud feeling to come across a, a product like that and have that. Yes, that. yes, yeah, it, it is It is a good thing, that's for sure, yeah. That's, that's, that's brilliant, thank you. And I think the, the kind of final thing that, that we, we want to ask, um, is over the next 10 years, um, how do you feel that, you know, w when the students that are currently with us are going to be sort of maybe out of university or finish their degree apprenticeships, et cetera, um, what do you think are going to be the changes in, in lighting design or maybe even in design in general over the next sort of 10 years? I think I'd probably split that into two. In lighting specifically, I think um, it's probably always been like this, but even more so now it's technology. It's, um, I mean, LED lighting technology is, is firmly established. It's the norm now. Um, but I think controllability will be even more um, apparent in, in homes where, um, you, you know, uh, rather than just leaving the light on all the time, it's controllable, it's controllable from a phone, it's got a uh, presence detector. It, you know, there's sort of an interactivity between the human being and the lighting. Uh, whether that's through your phone or through um, sensors or what have you. Um, controllability. Um, I think in general terms for design, I think the big um, topic at the moment, and, and rightly so, is sustainability. And I think this is at the heart of um, design, everything really, and, and, and rightly so. I think um, I talked about uh, you know that product is inhabiting the space you know so it has to it has to look good and perform well but i think there's a questioning now do, do, does the world need this product do we need another light do we need another light that does pretty much the same thing but looks slightly different you know i think there's a it has to there has to be more of a reason um there's always fashions that come and go and that's that's normal you know that, that, that but at Astro, what we're trying to do is to um, ensure that that product justifies its place in the world. We're not just doing it to create another light. We're creating another light that is more efficient, does a job better, 
um, you know, solve, solves the problem. And, and I think that that's the whole su sustainability story. Um, that's not just astro lighting. I think that's the world. And I think that's 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 how it should be. That, I think that is a that is what the world needs to deal with in the, in the coming years. So it, it's right that we, we discuss that now. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, a, you know, that's a key driver in it increasingly in uh, education. Mm. And the students are learning more and more about sustainability and the green energy and the importance of thinking about our planet and how these things are really going to impact us, yes. them and future generations um, and making those those right decisions now rather than yes. when it's too late. That's right. Yes. Yeah. D d and, and, you know, this is design and engineering. So we're considering them now. How do we design those products that that sustainability angle in right from day one you know how do we embed it in a product how do we make sure this is sustainable as it can be yeah excellent well, well james thank you so much for your time uh, here at emas and the academy we're just overwhelmed and enjoyed about uh, the partnership that we had with astro lighting and with yourself and uh, it was an absolute pleasure to hear your life story and also the opportunity to hear you answer some of these uh, questions that i know a lot of students will, will find impactful and uh, and valuable. So again, thank you very, very much. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you. Okay. Goodbye. Bye bye. bye.